Hello, welcome to Citizens Forum. It is Wednesday, November the 20th. I'd like to start by thanking the volunteer crew and the Shaw staff that makes this program happen every couple of weeks. My first guest is Norm Ryder, and we're going to be talking about a great bicycle trip that Norm took. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when you took it, so fill us in. Well, actually, I took two bicycle trips. I took one at the end of July, beginning of August, from here up along the Hope Princeton to a Soyuz, and from a Soyuz up to Salmon Arm, back through Merritt, and down the Fraser Canyon into here. With the extra riding, about 1,500K, and about 10,000 meters in 13 days of riding. I spent two days at a friend's farm as well. And now when you say 10,000 meters, you mean? Went up 10,000 meters. Okay. I came back down those 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> and those are the fun parts. Uh, but that ride is pretty much for, shall we say, someone hardcore. It's, it definitely was work for an old guy like me to push it that far. The gentler ride I took was the beginning of September from here once again out to Port Winfield and back through Lake Cowichan. And that in total with the extra riding was three days and about 300 kilometers and I don't know, I think it was 3,000 meters in total of elevation. And that ride in a lot of ways was actually probably more enjoyable. I intended to take my time. I learned a little bit on that other trip too. But it's frankly one that anyone even moderately good in cycling can do quite easily at relaxing and it's it's great scenery. I mean going out between Souk and Port Renfrew along the coastline you get up fairly high to get a good view out over Cape Flattery. That's that makes the trip all worthwhile, shall we say, just, and I was lucky for both rides that I had virtually no rain, which riding a bike in the rain is not fun. Now, I, if I ride, no, I don't ride anymore. I got hit by a yeah. bus and that was the end of my riding career. But if I ride even 10 kilometers in a day, used to, I thought, wow, I've really done something. Now, you went on two trips. The first one was 1,500 kilometers yeah. in how many days in 13 days 13 days so you're doing over 100 kilometers a day which yeah. for you know the bike riders in the crowd will be saying <laughs> yeah that's nothing but for people like me actually it's not that bad I, I, it might have been shall we say roughly equivalent to half a tour de france but they took only part of the day i took all day to ride the distance i was so it, it's a totally different type of ride, and it's a funny thing that once you get started, I thought I'd spend more time stopping at the places I wanted to stop at, that I've driven by many times in the past. And I'm going to stop there one day. Well, you know, I still didn't. But once you get on the bike, and other cyclists have told me the same thing, once you start doing this type of touring, you don't want to stop. That you almost curse at getting dark at night and you've got to pull over. I slept along the side of the road, found a good spot there. You almost curse at getting dark. You want to ride through the night too. Just keep riding. It, I don't know what comes over you in that sense, but the riding becomes more important than anything else. So I was somewhat able to control it going out to Port Renfrew. That actually a few years ago, my nephew and a group did that entire ride in one day. So, wow. well, he was getting in the category of semi pro, so <laughs> you, you would have taken a good ride. But the three days was a nice, comfortable ride. And someone with riding experience such as yourself, it wouldn't take you long to get into shape to actually do that next summer. It's not going to happen, I'll tell <laughs> you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it isn't really out of the question for somebody from a standing start to do it. Okay. And you're talking about both of them, even the, well, the 1,500 well, kilometer 1500 ride. Well, 1,500K, as I say, that's getting into a hardcore yeah. that's, that's pretty serious riding. Uh, but this other one definitely was well within. Okay. And what was the shorter one again? From here to? Out to Port Wentley, okay. then through Lake Cowichan, and came back between Cowichan and Duncan down the 
Cowichan Valley Rail Trail. That as well as, which is roughly the same as the Galloping Goose. And frankly, we have some very nice trails to get a lot of area covered in this, this whole area, whether it's the Lockside Trail, the Galloping Goose, uh, or this Cowichan Valley Trail that I think all of them are, sh stretches of it are paved, but the hard packed dirt is probably nicer to ride on, especially when it's dry, that it's hard, it's smooth, and it's, it's just more relaxing to ride on. Now you've got a kind of special bike. Is that a part of this as well? Well, that added to the whole experience. Uh, it's a three-wheeled recumbent bike. and. You're supposedly, you're better at their aerodynamics, so you're faster on the levels and downhill. I can get over 70 going downhill. Uh, but it's a little heavier and you don't stand up in the pedals, so you're a little slower going up the hills, but it's, it's not bad. And I have to ride a three-wheel type of bike because of the, my disability with the balance nerve cut. Mm. But Frankly, they are probably the most comfortable type of bike you could ride. It's sort of like sitting in your easy chair uh, going for a ride. Except your legs are having to move, so it's not well, quite as easy as... Well, you just make sure you get in the right gear and just yeah. keep going. It's How many gears does your bike have? Uh, this one has 30. Wow. But that's sort of deceiving on it because a lot of them overlap with each other. Now, how about riding on highways because uh, I mean riding in in traffic especially on highways where everybody's going by you at 60 70 or a hundred kilometers an hour uh, how was that well the trip through the interior there were a few spots I, I didn't like this one for the really is only I took to the highway coming between Duncan and Mill and Mill Bay and that, apart from that one car every three or four minutes it's not exactly no, it's not a, bad. Well, oh, going up to, I, I did time it so that it, I wouldn't get caught in weekend traffic going out. It was a Friday between China Beach and Fort Wentville, and I did that Friday morning. And it really isn't all that bad. The biggest problem I find in general, wherever I am on a bike, is not whether they can see me. I know they can see me. It's, they don't want to see me. As a matter of fact, this morning I had somebody pull out and cut me off. I had to lock up all three wheels and swerve around them. And when I spoke to her, she said, I saw you. Well, if you saw me, why did you pull out? <laughs> so it's those type of issues that and I think most cyclists find the same thing, that it's not not being seen, it's they don't want to see you. Yeah. As a sometimes driver, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> now you said you didn't stop or you didn't want to stop, but were there points of interest or stops of interest that um, you did make? Especially on this last trip, there were some nice, those roadside signs, stop of interest signs, telling about the Muir family farm outside of Souk or the Tugwell farm further along. There weren't as many as I remember on the ride through the interior. And I probably would have stopped a little more and taken a little more time if there had been those signs to stop. The same way drivers, if you've got a reason yeah. to stop, they're going to stop for a minute. Um, what was the weather like for your trip? Fortunately, almost all of it was good. The second to last day coming basically hope to mission it rained pretty hard that day on that trip but only for a short while and by the time we stopped the night I was dry and I cut my Port Wentley trip a little bit short because I thought the weather was going to change as it turned out it didn't so I could have spent a little more time but basically I did time well for the weather Good. Um, did you notice anything, you know, we live in an area that's probably been completely clear-cut at least once. 
Um, did you notice anything about nature uh, that you see when you're biking that you don't see when you're driving? Not as much as I would have expected. That you maybe see a little more of the squirrels running across the road, but I don't think I saw any large game on any of the trips, and I was reasonably isolated that there, there could have been some that I saw, but the clear cuts, there's a, a, one nice thing about the clear cuts, when you get up high and you start looking out over the straight wind of Fuca over Cape Flattery, it's nice they've taken all the trees down so you can see. <laughs> Yeah, now I hope you're being facetious here, but... There, there's yeah. two sides. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, people. How about people along the way? I would and say food. Oh, well, people are very nice. It, that People are very part nice. Part of it is, I think, because you're an old guy riding an unusual bike, and in many cases moving along at a pretty decent clip, that gets people's attention. and. I did cook some meals on the road, not as much as I wanted, more on this last trip. But you, I could stop in at a restaurant and get a supper there, and what I would do is have some hot cereal that I'd put into a thermos, get some hot water put in it at night, and by the next morning it was cooked and ready to eat. And they were quite happy to help me in that type of thing. That You, you did meet that. I, also through the Okanagan, stopped off at a lot of their fruit stands, and mm. it's the peak of the fruit season, so you've got to stop there. And I would uh, sometimes ask, well, one of them, I think of in particular, I didn't want to buy five pounds of apricots, but I did want a few apricots, a few peaches, and a few this, and so I know I got a good deal for, and she just went around and grabbed a few of, to get me a nice variety. And that, I'd say, is probably just about whether the others had a chance to do that or not. They were all quite friendly in that regard. How about uh, the nighttime? Where did you sleep? Oh, in the ditch. Or anywhere. That, well, you, that's one of the drawbacks in the cycling touring is that you don't know where you're going to be when it's time to quit. And so unless you make very short segments, like I did on the Port Winfrey trip, you sort of just have to find where you can pitch a tent and sleep there at night and you you got to start thinking about that. So you really are on the side of the road? Oh, well off. The one yeah. case I slept in the corner of the highway and uh, as I didn't think it was but it turned out to be an active logging road and I was out of the way. The logging truck drivers were quite nice. Actually the next morning, they started at 2 o'clock in the morning, and the next morning when I started going up one of the hardest climbs up Sunday Summit on Hope Princeton they were coming out, they had all seen me and sort of knew about me, and that's a hard climb. And of course, in a logging truck, it's a hard climb, and you definitely got, well, you can tell the difference, a friendly honk on the horn and a blare on the horn. Yeah. And they were all quite friendly about it. It was, it was quite nice in that sense that. Norm, congratulations, we're out of time. Okay. Just, uh, this is a little bit shorter than your trip. Thank you so much, that was very interesting. Okay. And I think one point is that if you're doing it, everybody else can do it too, and everybody else should. Well, that's really why I wanted to come on the show, was to tell people that. Okay. So, 1,500 kilometers, folks. Let's see if you can do it. <laughs> Not me. Thanks very much, Norm. Okay. Yeah. And thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.